Okay guys, today we're looking at thermostatic showers. Uh, right, let's start at the very beginning on this. Um, basically what these do is they modify the flow of hot water uh, to maintain a steady temperature. Um, the basics are they'll always have two controls, this is a Triton, uh, they'll always have two controls, one's for water on and off or water flow and one's for temperature. So in there that means two slides. Now these things have basically got slides that control the flow of water. Also with these they always end up with um, non-return valves. These go in the end here uh, and this is on each end there's a non-return valve. Um, the reason for that is to stop if you've got high pressure cold and low pressure hot it stops the cold get, uh, the hot being forced back up by the cold. Anyway, don't worry about that. Look, the simple thing is this. You can't just go out and buy one of these or a use, you know, and, and not know what it's going to go on. This one, for example, is what's called a Combi HP. Um, that means that it's for, I'm guessing, I've not looked at the specs, but I'm guessing it's for high pressure um, combi fed systems. So it's going to be low volume, high pressure. Um, it'll probably have a very tight spray pattern on the, um, on the shower head. Um, and just a quick one on that one, by the way, guys. If you go and bang any old shower head onto a thermostatic valve, you can stop it working. Um, they, they, quite a few of the manufacturers design these valves so that they actually work with the back pressure of the head that they supply with it. Anyway, I'll stop boring you. Why are we going inside this thing? Usually it's because they don't adjust properly anymore, um, you know, or, or, or it's jamming up or... The reality is, inside here, there's a couple of brass slides, or there's a couple of slides, and they're getting choked with debris or lime scale. Now, you probably say to yourself, oh God, but there's a load of settings on this, and, and you know, I can mess them up. Yes, you can. But it's quite simple. What you do, and bear in mind, there's no need to turn anything once you're inside this thing. So what you do is you get yourself your little, um, get yourself your little Sharpie, you know, this isn't a very good example, and you mark it, and you mark it, and you mark it so as you've got your mark as to where your yeah not even my pen works so you've got a mark as to where it sits usually you always get into these things with a central screw now I've obviously done this in advance for you because otherwise I'd be here for 40 minutes so we've got a little screw in the middle there that'll take that bit out then um, in theory so we'll get that out now we've marked that so we know where that's going you see how it goes on a little spline in there um, without that mark, we wouldn't know where that went. This was then actually held on with a um, held on with a circlip. Um, actually, no, sorry, it wasn't. Uh, in this instance, then the centre then comes out. The centre will come out. So we'll set that to one side, and this was held in with a big circlip. Now, most of these valves are usually of, of brass manufacture and not quite plastic like this one, but not slating it. I don't know. Um, I don't know how good this valve was. I just got it for this video. Anyway, okay. So circlip off. You can get your top off. You'll now see that we've got our spline set, our, our, our um, temperature spline set, and our on-off spline set. And we know where it should go because we've marked that. Hang on. We've marked that. We've marked that, and we've marked that. So we can just put that straight back on. Now remember, there is no need to turn anything on this. Um, we'll be able to get into it, be able to clean it up, and we'll be, make, be able to make sure that everything's okay. Um, we won't need to turn it, so we can usually get it back where we need to. Anyway, okay. Right, so in this instance, bear in mind, you're obviously going to have to have a water off for this, uh, the hot and the cold. Um, you check it stop running by uh, turning the, um, the shower on and turning it hot and cold and making sure nothing comes out of the shower head. So, screws out. I mean, in this instance, it goes right around here. By the way, if you're interested, Aqualisa and quite a few manufacturers colour code the insert to tell you what it is. So if you're buying an insert for an Aqualisa, there's a purple, or is it pink, I forget, pink, grey and a white all the different types, you need to tell them what colour. So it's just worth mentioning, if someone ever says what colour, this is why. Right, in this instance, that'll come off. Obviously not that easy, there's a few screws. And you can actually see, here's the first of our slides. <coughs> if I can get that off on camera. Um, bear in mind, you don't do it like this at home, you'll be doing it much more gently, but I'm doing it in front of a camera. So there we are, that's our first slide. Now that's actually the on-off slide in this instance. 
um, and that just blocks these ports and it stops the water from um, coming out of it. Now what I should have done in that instance, obviously, and what you should do is to mark it, mark it, mark it, so you've got all the different points and you can then withdraw that. Now if that's what you've got problems with, the on off, that's where you're looking at cleaning. You've got a couple of O-rings here, O-ring there, then in here, here's where the, the O-rings slide, so you want some um, silicon grease in there to get it to slide nicely. That's assuming you're having problems with on-off. And then again, you see the little thread here that forces that up and down here. Okay. Right. There is another tip, by the way. Um, it's quite often worth setting these to full cold to do the task, because what you're doing then is you're setting it to a known position you're setting it to full cold. Anyway, usually you'd find that this base piece would unscrew and you'd be able to get at the actual um, the thermostatic part. In this instance, bit of a design something, don't know, you actually have to go in through the back. So what we'll do is we'll just show you from here what you're up to. Normally this all comes out through the front. Um, I don't know why it comes out the back on this one. And here's the, the, re the real gubbins of what we've got. I'll just push him out so you can have a look and see. Right, all you've got. In there, there's a little bit of a, a it's like a hydraulic ram or a, a wax, it's wax in there and when it gets hot it expands and extends. And what that's doing is moving this piston here to block or open um, the flow of hot water. How much it moves or how much that affects it is done by the adjustment here on this one and again you see how we're fiddling with this on on this film but what you what you wouldn't be doing and you'd have noticed I had no need to turn this when I took that out I just slid it out and as you can imagine how far that is in and out it makes no difference where it goes back in just so long as it's not further out or further in so again if you don't twiddle it you can put this back with minimal fuss and minimal effort anyway right so the real usual problems with these is quite simple. That piece there, binding and not moving automatically with the temperature. And look, you see in there, you can actually see, even on this one, there's the O-ring there, and there's all the crusty nastiness right there. So what you'd be looking at doing, I wouldn't pick the O-ring out because it might be a bit of a pig to get back in, but you'd be looking at getting something and just cleaning it out here. So you're making sure that this will slide nicely on that in there. So you'll be getting some grease in that, you'll be checking this for like a, a tide mark of um, tide mark of, of scale and all the spring's doing is making sure it stays up in position. So you're putting it back in, not going to be too tricky, so sits on top, pushes back up and in, the spring goes after it, the only tricky bit in this instance is to get it to come up through the front but still, there we go. So you see the point, you've got two slides, one here for on off, and normally access through the front, um, access through the top, I mean, oh yeah, well front, because it would be sitting like that on the wall, wouldn't it? Not through the back, is uh, your wax capsule, and on that, all you've got is a slider, and it's that slider that jams. Okay, let's talk spares and stuff. Um, these days you can get spares for these anywhere, you can get a service pack, just go look at what on earth you've got, get yourself on Google, this is a Combi HP by Triton, you'll find that online you can get a service pack for that straight away for about 10-15 quid, um, I think Shower Spares is a guy that does not um, at which point you're probably going to be getting all the seals for that, um, possibly new uh, non-return valves, loads of bits and bobs, so it's quick and easy and don't be, don't be overly scared um, by these so long as you mark it as you take it out you're usually okay also even if you're not right consider consider the following okay this here this piece here the on off piece let's just put that on there and just think about this a minute all that's doing is that's going full open full close so we don't really have to worry about the on off because that's just doesn't matter where that's set does it really you know you, you if it's if you put it back on and it's letting water through, you just close. So that piece you don't have to worry about. What you do have to worry about is getting that to sort of to work right. 
But if you can imagine, sticking through the top of this is that little thing, which sits in there. All you've really got to do is take your little thing off and move it to where it feels right. So move it to if you're, you know, if it's if it's you normally feel that you know you shower around there, and that's how it's right. Twiddle it and set it to where it feels right. So you can't go all that far wrong. Don't get me wrong. There's a few of these, you know, the little button that lets it go over 42 degrees. You can quite easily end up with that not working quite right. Um, but from a DIY perspective, um, there's worse things that can happen than that. But if you want to be certain, you just mark each piece as you go. Don't adjust it, and there you go. Right, a couple of other things, by the way. Um, there's uh, non-return valves in these things can be a bit of a pig. Um, what can happen is you can end up with hammering going around the house. It's like a du -du 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 noise. Because what happens is one of the non-return valves has got muck in it. You can get them out. They can, they're usually a bit of a pig to get out. And they use, they're always located on the pipes going in. Quite often you'll find that, you see how it's got an elbow there, you quite often find that there's a screw on the top there, you can get it out and look at the non-return valve. The non-return valve is, is it's nothing, it's, um, that's a flow restrictor by the way in case you're interested. Um, it just stops too much water going through. All they are is it's just a little mushroom like that, right, held by a spring in there. Don't worry about it. All you need to do really is to blow through them. That gets the crap out of them. So you see how it's nice and really lightly spring loaded and there's quite a lot of space as well all you've really got to do is blow and just make sure so if you're if you're getting into it through the top there just you know blow and suck through there and get the muck out of it um, that's the real crucial thing is to get the muck out of them but yeah water hammer quite often is caused by that in summary then don't be scared two slides um, can be a bit of a faff this is in fact the worst valve I've ever worked in um, um, don't get me wrong, I'm sure for the cost of it, it's great value for money, but um, there we are. The standard problem is um, lime scale on here. It's easy to get off once you're at it. These don't tend to go wrong. Um, it's lime scale on there that's the usual problem. Non-return valves is a banging noise, and spares are easily available for almost any of these anywhere. Um, so feel free to Google them, and it also give you the exploded diagram of your exact valve. There we are guys, hopes that helps.